Uh, hi, I'm Mike Evans. Um, some of you might know me as the guy behind the curtain producing live surgery events for uh, AUA, SAGES, um, AAGL, that sort of thing. Um, I work in the background uh, planning and putting these events together. Um, one thing that you might remember uh, from a few years ago is a live surgery broadcast we did from uh, Afghanistan. This was uh, a transmission from a uh, forward operating base in Bagram uh, into the SAGES meeting in 2006. Um, a few years before that, um, I started working with uh, Dr. Paul Severson and Project Haiti as a volunteer to support telecommunications and video for surgery uh, and telementoring in a small town called Pignon in Haiti. Um, I've also been working with the SAGES Global Curri Curriculum to uh, uh, help uh, facilitate the live uh, speakers and events. Um, these are my disclosures. I uh, own a company called Boxline Box. We produce live surgery for medical education um, and uh, abstracts and things like that. Um, I also am the co-founder of uh, the company that became uh, the Stryker Communications Division of Stryker Corporation. So what does it mean to uh, have quality telementoring? Um, to me, on the technical side, it means that we should have the same kind of quality for the, the presenter and also the audience, um, no matter where they are in the world. Um, this is one of our events that we've produced uh, uh, for the AUA. And on the right side there, you can see uh, our group in uh, Haiti uh, during a live uh, transmission. So I try to approximate the experience as best we can to, given the environment. So uh, what does it mean for quality? Well, this means you need to have a great experience for both the surgeon um, on the receiving side of a telementoring or the student uh, receiving telementoring and also for the presenter who is uh, donating their time a lot of times, might be in another time zone or, or something like that. You can see in here we have uh, uh, Dr. Namiri um, in Abu Dhabi, um, me setting things up in the middle there, um, and then three locations in Haiti uh, all joining into the call. So uh, I want to provide as good of an experience as possible so these guys will come back and actually um, present for us again. Um, so. The, one of the big challenges with all of this, um, especially in developing countries, is uh, the location. Um, often it can be quite a challenge just to get to the location where someone is going to be uh, taught or telemetered or even uh, surgically um, uh, educated remotely. Um, so there's often not a lot of power, there's not a lot of uh, network and all that kind of stuff. But um, you know, it, those things can be overcome by various networks that I'll get to in a minute. Um, one of the interesting things also is uh, even without a lot of technology, the people in these locations really will work together and use the technology that they have in order to accomplish things. This is a photo of uh, uh, an air conditioner compressor being carried to the roof of uh, our hospital in Pignon um, using a ramp like they used to carry the blocks to the top of the pyramids. Um, so even though we didn't have a crane, we had an inclined plane and used that technology to get it going. So another challenge with the location is power. It can often be you know, erratic, um, potentially damaging to your equipment. Um, bandwidth in these locations is limited um, and uh, sometimes unreliable and also uh, very expensive if you run over the amount uh, of bandwidth that you've initially purchased from the provider. Um, also, when you get into a location, sometimes the technology to, to give the presentation is limited or basic. You can see here, um, this is actually a photo of Dr. Severson uh, presenting with a projector that we brought and a small monitor that was uh, brought in from, uh, from Port-au-Prince uh, by some other surgeons and our little camera and little speaker. So um, the, the technology can be very, very basic. Um, also. Uh, the technology in the OR can be very basic. You might be interfacing with older equipment if you're doing a surgical telementoring session. Um, on the photo on the bottom there, one thing to also remember is never assume that anything is as it is um, where you're from. So one of the challenges in, uh, in Haiti uh, was 
lighting control. I had asked, hey, are there curtains in this room that we're gonna be doing the, the, the global uh, curriculum in? Oh, sure. So we get there and uh, they have uh, nice sheets across the windows to control the lighting. But in the end, it gives us great um, video quality for um, the, the projector. Um, so the basic requirements of uh, a telementoring session, um, you have to have good quality interaction, real-time video and audio. You need a clear image um, and intelligible audio as well. Um, the uh, system, if you're doing a surgical telemetry, needs to be unobtrusive to the surgeon. It has to be easy for them to, to work with so they can attend to the patient um, while they're learning from a remote side. Um, one important piece also is having some recording capability uh, for archival. So you can actually compile a library and use it for other uh, teaching events or um, so the student that is being taught can actually watch it again themselves. Um, it should also be simple to use and potentially portable. Now, I prefer that telementoring systems kind of live in one place uh, when, when uh, a project is happening because that creates a gravity around the location and uh, the opportunity for future teaching events. But uh, we also have systems that are portable so you can move from location to location and do special events uh, and we've done both of those. Um, one thing about connectivity is it should be stable and as low latency as possible. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. And a most important thing is having local support. Um, it's important to count on and train your local people to support your doctors there. Um, so when they're trying to do a telementoring session or even when they're uh, receiving a, an educational event, that you have someone on the ground who's your first line of support after you went somewhere else. So um, the foundation of all of this is telecommunications. Now we're very lucky in highly developed countries to have constant connectivity um, with our phones and tablets and things like that. The average user now is over five gigabytes a month of always on connectivity. Um, but using these methods uh, of connectivity in places where um, the network isn't always as reliable um, or it costs a lot or um, there are other issues can lead to uh, um, some challenges. So it's important to not think that oh, it works in the US, it's gonna work in, in South Africa someplace. Um, so especially things like software as a service, uh, cloud computing, that kind of stuff. Um, one other thing is the bandwidth that you can get in these remote locations tends to be very expensive and have lots lower data caps than uh, we are familiar with. So uh, you may not be able to um, purchase as much data as you're going to use in a single run, you might have to get a couple of SIM cards or satellite orders and that kind of thing. Um, so it's important to think different about that. So typically the network types that we use in these locations are either a satellite, a broadband, or a, a cellular type situation. And satellite is great because you can use it anywhere. Um, and we initially started in Pinon with uh, satellite telecommunications. This allowed us two-way video and audio to any place in the world um, using a satellite that was uh, uh, very high speed. It was a carrier class kind of system. Um, but it was also very expensive in the, the region of you know $1,000 a month while we were there trying to do uh, telementoring stuff. So um, there are also possibilities in some cities um, for local broadband services. And this is showing up more and more. You might have heard of WiMAX. Um, or, or some other fixed wireless things. Now, we're not seeing that in the countryside in places, but we are starting to see it in cities like Port-au-Prince. Um, and also, uh, cellular networks have really come online uh, in remote locations. And there are some interesting pieces of hardware that you can use to create connectivity for your equipment um, by bonding together several different cellular carriers into a data pipe that actually could be usable for two-way video and some other things. Um, on the right side there, I put a little chart that shows pricing between uh, you know, the different options. And the uh, you know, satellite is great, but it's very expensive. Um, and uh, you know, there's the broadband and then cellular again. Um, the neat thing about that is 
we are moving toward what's called 4G and LTE, which we probably all have on our phone that's in our pocket, but a lot of uh, countries right now still do not have LTE coverage. So as we go that direction, data speeds will improve and it's gonna make uh, uh, the possibilities for doing telementoring and, and other things a lot more uh, versatile. So how do you get the video from one place to another? Um, typically, there are two ways. One is a piece of hardware called a codec. Um, that uh, offers the best quality of video um, because it's a standards-based machine. It's like an appliance for uh, sending and receiving video. Um, but it requires a more complex installation and they're very expensive. Um, coming online, now uh, there are some cloud-based and software video conferencing, conferencing uh, applications. Um, you, you know, you see some logos for various ones down here. The challenge with those is uh, they often will not talk to the traditional standards-based systems. So if you have infrastructure uh, that you want to communicate with, um, you may or may not be able to connect with them uh, without either extra charges or having to use uh, different methods. Also, you may or may not be able to use them in a remote location due to the fact that some of the services are cloud-based and the data transactions that have to take place in the background um, often outweigh uh, the connectivity that you might have uh, wherever you are. Um, so to get things going uh, for our uh, Haiti uh, series uh, for the global curriculum, basically this is how we put it together. One is to plan ahead. Set up your data accounts, make the drawings, you know, let the locals know. Possibly do a site visit to, uh, to determine uh, what you're going to need to put in uh, at the location. Then if you're doing surgical telementoring, it's important to think about what devices are going to be in the OR. If a, if a teacher is going to be watching from a thousand miles away, how do you get the video out of their scope into your system to send it to them? There are various ways to do that, and also there are uh, um, older systems in a lot of places, so it's a little bit of a challenge sometimes. Um, very important is to work with the locals, again, because they know more than you think and they have access to resources that you would never find. Um, I see groups uh, come and kind of plow in and do their own thing, and that can be challenging and uh, disheartening for the locals as well. But there are always people that are um, on the staff at the hospitals or in other locations that are interested in supporting events like this and supporting surgery and telemedicine and that kind of thing. So work with those guys. Um, they will also help you determine a security plan for your equipment when you leave. Um, because uh, I've returned to some place uh, a couple of times and where's the speaker? Where's the microphone? Where's the monitor? <laughs> so uh, it's important to have the, your local uh, tech support people be able to keep an eye on everything for you. Um, and also, for an event, um, uh, you should consider what we call disposables, um, which are batteries, hard drives, memory cards, that kind of stuff, um, and space for recording. This uh, it becomes very apparent if you're ready to go live and, and you don't have a battery for the doctor's microphone or, or uh, you can't record because of some uh, disc being full. Um, so it all um, amounts to planning ahead and making sure that you have good technical support on the ground to make it happen. Um, for the SAGES Global Curr Curriculum, um, we've done 30 presentations. Um, before each one, a couple of days ahead, we, uh, we do a test connection, and I sit with the presenter and, and check out their video feed and their audio and their presentation and all that stuff, and make sure they're comfortable with the technology um, before we um, do the actual presentation piece of it. Um, one important piece is if there are slides or video, we need to send those to the receive location ahead of time, not only because their network connection might be a little slower and if your PowerPoint's huge and it's got a bunch of uh, video in it, uh, it'll take a long time to download, but also so they can translate it into the local language and it's there um, alongside your live connection. So even if you have uh, network issues or have to fall back to lower um, uh, bandwidth, the presenter can still uh, get the message across to the audience 
and the, the receive side people can follow along with the full quality content. It's not being uh, diminished in quality based on your uh, live connectivity. Um, and if you're doing telementoring for surgery, test and connect before the patient comes in because that way uh, it becomes less of a distraction for everyone uh, when you get into the patient situation and the surgeon's not, not distracted. So um, quick conclusions, um, quality is huge. Um, that is probably my uh, thing that I think about all the time with these live connections. Um, the environment of low, you know, faraway lands and uh, remote locations can be difficult, but you can always overcome uh, by selecting the right network and working with the locals. Um, and plan uh, each session ahead of time so you know that it will be successful when you get into the teaching event. And of course, work with the locals, I keep saying that, um, because they're a great help and they'll bring you a much bigger wrench than you even asked for. So uh, that is what I've got. Does anyone have any questions?